have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Prince of Potigo is a small little Euro game of card manipulation. And it really is kind of neat. Now, the components are nice. They're, they're very easy. And I think the strategies in the game may, may be a little bit more complex than what the game lets on. But, but let me be clear. This is a very simple game. This is a very intro-level game. Now, here's where the game goes wrong for me. I, I mean, I think it's fun. It just becomes repetitive. So you're doing the same actions over and over and over again. Um, and sometimes you do well because the card you need comes out and you snatch it and luck be as it may. It's just extremely repetitive. And what you're doing is very, very repetitive. It's the same thing over and over. The majority of the cards are the same. I think the theme is blah. You've seen it a lot. The components are outdated at this point. They're okay. There's nothing wrong with cubes or what's going on here. You know, the little things are really small. They're really hard to look at. It's just not going to pop for what it is anymore. But let me say this. If you're looking for, if you like the theme and you like the way it looks, and, and that's fine, I think it's a very simple game to play. I think it could even be used as, you know, that jumping off point from a gateway. It's quick. It plays, it plays rather quickly. I think it's fun. Uh, if the repetitive nature of it doesn't bother you. I think you'll get a couple good plays out of it. You know, if you can find this game relatively cheap, and I think the first time you play it, you're going to like it a lot more than you are going to be the fourth time. I don't think any new strategies are going to jump out at you after maybe the second or third play. Uh, with that said, there, there's totally a place in our collection for games like this, right? Especially if you don't have a large collection and you're on a budget and you're looking for a good game that might be cheap, I think Prince of Patio will be a game that could jump out and say, okay, it's not going to cost very much. I'm going to get a few plays out of this. And if I spread those plays out, I'll probably get even more out. It's a nice little quick little game that you can play. And you could totally play this two-player. Um, with that said, I'm going to purge it. It's not going to be for me. I just have so many games in my collection. It's not going to stand out enough. It's, and, I, and I have to make some hard decisions sometimes. Because when a game stinks, or I don't like it, or it's broken, it's easy to get rid of. And then when you have a game, you're like, you know what? This is an above average game. It's actually a pretty good game. And if I spent a couple nights playing it, I'd probably have a good time. But man, I'd have a lot better time playing this, 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 this. And, and you go on, especially the larger your collection is. And I want to spend time playing those games. So that's kind of where it's going to come out. It's not that it's a bad game. It's actually a really fun game. It's just compared to other games that I have in my collection, it's not going to make the cut. So I'm going to purge it. But, you know, if you're out somewhere and somebody wants to show you this one or you find it cheap and it fits into your collection or you just want to try it, definitely pull this one out. You're going to, ha you're going to have a decent enough time. I think with four players, it might go on a little bit too long. The box is up to 90 minutes. I think that's really long. I don't think it'll be that much. I think most people can get this done in an hour unless somebody has really bad analysis paralysis. Here are the components for Principatio. Um, you can see I love this, how the guy's being showed a portrait of himself, which almost looks like a mirror. It's just really comical to me. It's another one of those bland little countryside covers, and you have some people sitting there. It is what it is. You're going to get an instruction manual that is pretty darn good, not, not too short, and very colorful. It tells you some end of game things, explains the goal cards. And any action cards will be up here. You're going to get some player aids that will be utilized. Uh, really, it's just a way to organize your scoring more than does anything. They're kind of flimsy, but that's okay because they're just set right down on the board. They don't really move at all. And you have some nice artwork that you'll never see because it's on the back of your player aid. Uh, the thickness is okay, and they will do different things. You can see catapults and, and shields and what they'll be giving you. Next, we'll have some of these tiles. You can kind of see how they look like. They're uh, fairly thin, but okay. You can kind of see what they are. So the yellow ones will be a little bit different than the blue ones. We've got a number of these little cubes, uh, miniature cubes in three different colors. They'll be yellow, green, and purple that represent different things. We're going to get some paper. It's going to be the money or currency in the game, if you will. 
Here are the green tiles in the game. You can see they give you green cubes and do different things. Last but not least are the cards in the game. So this will kind of tell you the military scoring and the turns. And you'll see these have scrolls on them. And on the back they'll have little things that you can do, which we'll go over in the, in the flow of the game. Here are the blue cards. And they'll do some different things. And you, and you have quite a few cards in here. And I'll go through what each of them doing the flow of the game. You can see the artwork is pretty good. The icons used are fairly simple to understand. And, I mean, everything is really pleasant. Very well done. It's, it's a good little package that you get here. Nothing stands out. Nothing's going to be on the table. You're like, wow, that looks fantastic. It's an older Euro game. It's, it comes in a small box and does what it does. The components are fine, but nothing to write home about. The rules for this game are really simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, there's only like six, seven different tiles in the game. Um, with the cards, a lot of time, we just kind of pass the book around until people start memorizing the cards. They repeat a lot. So you're going to see the same cards over and over and over again. Uh, and, and there are different seasons and years with different cards will come out and become more powerful. So that's nice. Um, it's really about learning those cards. The quicker that players can learn those cards, the quicker they won't need to have the reference anymore. So when the game starts out, you're going to have two sets of goals. One's with the ones on the back and one's with the two. And you're going to get one from set one and one from set two. And like most of these games, it'll just kind of put you in a way that you can score points. And, and, and you can utilize these to score extra points at the end of the game. Um, you're also going to have these decks of cards that will have one, two and three on the back. When the game starts, you will be using deck number one. And based on the number of players, you will put out a number of cards. And these will cards that will be available during this round. So I'm just gonna set these up here to utilize that. You're also gonna, everybody's gonna have the same season one card. Uh, these are all gonna be exactly the same. You'll take one of these, and everybody will randomly get one of these season two cards. And the season two cards will be a little bit different. You're also going to start out with one field, one farm, one plaza, one bank token, and one cube of each. So everybody will kind of start out with that. On, on any given turn, you're going to have two cards in your hand you can choose from. And right here is going to be a different symbol. So if you play this card because of this symbol, you will then have to exchange it with one card in the center, and then this will, will take its place. With this, with nothing there, or blank one, then you do not exchange it when you use it. It just stays in your hand. You're not allowed to exchange it uh, during the same action. Um, so you can activate an action card in your hand. You can change an action card. And that will allow you to uh, exchange one of your two action cards for a card from the display. But you do not activate it. So that just kind of gets the card that you want in your hand. And the last one is to take a favor cube. You can just take a cube. Uh, when the purple one's from the stock and it's just yours. On your turn, you will be performing two of these actions. So play one from your hand or exchange one and put the card down there you don't want anymore or take a purple favor cube. Those are the three things that you can do on your turn and you get to do two. You get to do it twice. At the end of the turn, whichever card is here at the end will leave, everything will scoot down and a new card will come out. When the deck runs out for year one, then this round will be over. You'll do some military scoring and then Deck number two will be used for the second round. As the game progresses, you'll be putting these tiles out on your board. If you have a catapult, you'll have one military defense. If you have a militia, you have to supply it with one green cube. If you don't, then it's worth negative one to your militia. And you'll have the conatari, which will require a gold. You must pay them. And if you don't, it's worth negative one. So that's why you'll be getting the green and yellow cubes because you have to pay these. And if you get the catapults, they're the best because you don't have to give them anything. So at the end of the turn, you would give him a food and him a, um, a gold. And if so, they will defend for you. They'll have three militia for you. Um, and how that's going to score is off this little chart right here. So in a two-player game, whoever has the most is going to get five victory points and second zero and so on and so on, depending on the number of players. So when, after each year you'll kind of score your militia and see what you're able to get. 
In addition to scoring in militia, the military three times during the game, once after each season or, or each after each year, uh, there are also cards in the deck that will trigger the scoring of the military. So there's a few times it'll happen maybe when you're not quite ready. Otherwise, it's going to happen at the end of each year. The easiest way for me to show you how some of these cards work is just to show you the back of the book. The back of the book will have all the possible cards in the game on the back here. So what you'll be doing when you play the cards is return a food cube to stock in exchange you place one bank token or return three food to the stock and you get to place two bank tokens which will in effect give you two cube, yellow cubes. Uh, in the third year return one food cube to the stock in exchange place one catapult token from the stock. So you can utilize this to put things on the board and those catapults will stay there forever and never need food. You can return one money cube to the stock in exchange plus one farm token. Return one food cube to the stock and exchange one palazzo. And that's how you get these little buildings out there. This one allows you to take as many few cubes from the stock as the field tokens in your principality. Take as many conetary tokens from the stock as you want and place them in your principality. Remember, taking those can be risky because you're going to have to pay them gold at the end of the round, otherwise they hurt you. So these cards will just allow you to kind of put those things out and get the other buildings. These sculptors allow you to get these uh, paintings or sculptures that are worth victory points. And this will just give you cubes. So take two money cubes or one food and a million cube. And it just gives you things. Take three money cubes. Take three food cubes. And you can trade them in for the victory points, which are the blue. Um, take as many money cubes from the stock as there are palazzo tokens in your principality. So the market will, will increasingly give you more of the cubes. So you'll just kind of be collecting these chits, which will give you... the. Um, these two act exactly alike, and these are just storage. This allows you to store two yellow and two green. Very easy. So you'll need those in order to be able to store these. And these two will give you more. Every time you get a yellow or a green, you're able to actually get more. But you need a place to store those. And the whole point of getting those is to collect these reds that will be your military and be able to score victory points there in the game. And here's where your blues go. And your blues are just worth additional victory points. So you can see here a three and a five, depending on that. But they might trigger some of your end of uh, end of game scoring cards that you have. It's a very simple game. A lot of the cards repeat each other, and because you can take this out and put it in your hand, you can definitely disrupt when when cards are coming out, uh, and depending on what kind of strategy that you're implementing. Who should buy this game? I think you're going to look at the art and you're going to like the theme, first of all. And then I think you're going to want an enjoyable little game that plays two to four. That's just a little bit of car manipulation and um, you're not expecting it to blow your mind, right? So this is going to be one of those games you kind of bring out, maybe to set the stage for something bigger later on in the night. Or you're going to play two or three or four little small games. This could be one of those. The component's going to be outdated, so you're going to have to look past that. I think the game is fine. I wish the cards didn't repeat as much or just feel it just feels repetitive. It feels like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, look, I think there are better games on the market now. I think you're going to find a better game. I think this one's going to come down to price. If the price is right on this one, I think it might be something you might pick up because there are a few good plays in this. Other than that, I would probably say just try this one out or just pass this one on by. There are better games on the market. It's going to be a purge for me. And I'm going to move on from this review. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching. And everybody else, keep playing games.